Tell me if this sounds familiar. Every time you start a new game, you end up copying and pasting code from previous projects and you think to yourself, I should really organize this into a template. Nah, I'll do it next time. Give me 15 minutes and I'll take you from this to this. Nobody likes digging through old projects trying to remember which game has the code you're looking for. It's a frustrating waste of time, but by the end of this video, you'll never have to do that again. I'm going to show you how to use GitHub template repositories to store and maintain a reusable base project. It's free, and once it's set up, starting a new project is a snap. Not that kind of snap. If you're unfamiliar with Git or GitHub, don't worry, we're only going to touch the tip of the iceberg, and I'll give you the few commands that you need and tell you when to use them. The idea here is to strip out all the frequently used code and move it into a generic base project. This would include systems like audio and scene managers, a start screen, and a settings menu that saves player preferences. In future videos, I'll walk you through the features of my personal base project and make that available for you to use. So, now would be a great time to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified when that becomes available. In the meantime, let's look at how you can set this up on your own. So obviously the first thing that you're gonna need is your base project. This tutorial isn't about creating that base project, it's just about the workflow that makes use of it. So for this example, I've got a dummy project set up. It's got a title screen, a game over screen, and a couple other files. The contents don't really matter, we just need to be able to verify that they've gone up to GitHub and come down when we're creating a new project from it. The one thing I will say about setting up that base project is when you do create the project from the start, make sure that you've got your version control set to Git. Once you've got your base project, if you haven't already, you're going to want to go to github.com, set up a free account. You won't need to pay for any of the stuff that we're doing. And then if you haven't already installed Git on your machine, I'm going to leave links below for how to do that on both a Mac and a PC. In this tutorial, we're going to be using uh, the terminal for managing these projects. On PC, I think they call it the command prompt. Functionally speaking, they're identical. You absolutely can do all of this using the GitHub desktop client. I prefer to use the terminal because I find it to be a little bit faster and a little bit more stable, especially as your projects get bigger. I recommend following along with the terminal, and once you get comfortable with that, if you decide you don't like it, you can switch over to the desktop client. So now that we've got our base template and we've set up our account, if you come to your profile page, it'll look something like this. Before we create any repositories, we need to change just a couple of settings to make sure that we can access our repo from the terminal. First, if you haven't done so, make sure that you verify your email address. They claim you'll be required to do this. I wasn't, I just set up this account for this tutorial and I never had to do it, but I'll link this below in case you run into that. And then the other thing that we're gonna to need to do is create a personal access token because you can't use your website's username and password to authenticate when pushing and pulling from Git. You can click on your user profile in the upper right and find settings. And then down at the bottom left under developer settings, we're going to select personal access tokens and they recommend using fine grain tokens. You're going to click generate new token. You can give it a name. I'm just going to say bacon and games token. These do expire. I'll usually set them to 90 days. And then once it expires, you just create a new one. Since this is for me and I'm the owner of the account, I'm gonna set it to all repositories. So I'm gonna go through and give myself all the permissions for both a repository and account. But depending on who you're giving access, you might select different permissions, but I'm gonna speed through this with movie magic because there's quite a bit here. And then I'm gonna do the same for account permissions. And once that's done, I'm gonna click generate token. That's gonna to give me this long goofy password which you should copy and put somewhere secure. I'm a 1Password user, so I'm gonna stick it in there. And this will serve as our password when GitHub asks us to authenticate in Terminal. With that done, I definitely recommend coming back into Settings, going into Password and Authentication, and turning on some version of 2FA if you haven't already, just to keep your account extra secure. And now we're ready to set up our template repository. Click on the little GitHub cat, or whatever it is, 
and click Create Repository. I'm going to call this Godot Template. I'm going to make this private because I think most people following this tutorial are making base projects just for themselves. I'm going to ignore all of this for now, and I'm just going to click Create Repository. It's now going to take me to the repository where it's going to show me some of the Git commands that I need and give me the URL for connecting to this repository. So at this point, we can open up our terminal and we're going to navigate to our template project. So we can do a CD and on Mac, you can just drag this in. It's going to give you the path and hit enter. So now I'm working from within this directory right here. The first thing that we're going to do on our end is initialize this as a git repo by typing the command git init. And if you get an error when you do that, it probably means you either forgot to or didn't install git properly. Next, we're going to run the command git add period. Add means that we're going to add these files to the repository, and the period serves as basically an asterisk that says everything in this folder is something that we want to add. Next, we're going to run our first commit. And you can think of commits like a save state. You're basically saying, I've gotten this code to a place where I feel everything is working properly. And so you'll take a snapshot at that point and give it a note saying what it was. In our case, it's just going to say first commit. And that command is going to be git commit dash m first commit. And the first commit is the note that you're giving to remind yourself or others what was actually in this commit. In our case, this is the first time we're putting code into the repo, so it doesn't need to be very descriptive. Future commits will be something like added audio manager or updated audio manager to work with Godot 4.2. So now it's going to tell us that all of these things are a part of this commit. And this is where we'll need to go back and grab this URL, which we can do by clicking here to copy it. We'll come back in here. I'm going to clear this to make it look nice and pretty. And we'll say git remote add origin. And then we're going to paste that. And that's going to connect this Git repository that we created to the one that's on GitHub. And lastly, we're going to run this command that sends it up to GitHub. Now, the first time it's going to fail because it's going to say it needs to authenticate. So you can actually press up on your terminal to cycle up and down to cycle through recent commands. So I'm going to just press up once, make this a little bigger so that's all in one line. And this time it's going to ask me for my username, which is bacon and games. I'm going to hit enter. And now I'm off screen. I'm going to copy that giant personal access token. I'm going to click back in here. I'm going to paste it and you're not going to see anything because it hides it for security purposes. I'm going to hit enter. And now you can see it's run through all the objects in our commit and says we didn't get any errors. So we can come back here to our base template. And if I hit refresh, You'll see now that project is here. We've got our project file. We've got the images. If I go into these folders and click on these, we can see here's all of our code. And so that's how you get your base project up onto GitHub. As you add and change things over time, you will need to repeat this process to get that new code up there, although it's fewer commands for additional pushes. So as an example, let's go back into Godot and just open up our global file. And let's just change these to 100 by 100. And let's do two other common things. We're going to add a file, and we're going to delete a file. So let's create a new script. We'll just say test script. Open that up, clear this out, and just say test. And then we're going to delete this icon. So now we've made some changes to our repo and we want to put them back into our base template for future projects to be able to use. We can come into terminal. We're going to repeat our git add period to make sure we're getting everything. Now we're going to do our commit. For our case, we're just we're going to say example commit, hit enter. And now you can see it's showing us what's been added, what's been deleted, what's been changed. And then the only thing that we need to repeat, we don't ever need to do that remote add origin. That's a one-time command. Now we're just going to say git push dash u origin main. It runs, we go back to GitHub and go back up to our template. And you can see that the image is gone. If I go into my auto loads, we have our test script here with our new test code and our globals now shows 100 and 100. So those three commands, add, commit, and push 
are really all you'll need to continue maintaining this project and adding new features. Git does way, way more than that. And if you get to a point where you want to start using branches and doing other fancier stuff, you can go outside of the scope of this and learn more about Git. But for our purposes, you don't even necessarily have to fully understand what those commands are doing. You just have to remember to do them in that order when you've finished making changes that you want to save in your template. Okay, so now we've got a template that we can work from, a base project. And there's one thing we need to do before we can start using this with other projects. If I click on settings in my repo, this very first checkbox, if I click that, it's gonna turn this into a template repository. And all that's gonna do is every time I create another repository in this account, I'll have the option of starting from the template that we just created rather than a blank one like we did the first time through. So let me go back to my profile page and click on repositories. And here's where this starts to get really powerful. So let's say you're gonna participate in a global game jam and you wanna get up and running super fast. How do you use this workflow to get started quickly for the game jam? It's crazy simple. You can click on new here to create a new repository. And now you see we have this new option, repository template. I'm gonna select the Godot template that we just created. And then let's call this global game jam 24. And I'm again, make this private because it's just for me. Then I'm gonna click create repository. And it's gonna run for a second and then you'll see, rather than starting with an empty project, it's made our first commit for us and all of our code as we left it is here. Awesome. So how do we get that onto our local machine to start working? Well, it's actually quite simple. I'm gonna pull up terminal, let's clear this. And then we're gonna pull up our finder window so you're gonna to wanna to navigate to the root folder that you want to put your project in. And you don't need to create a folder for that project. That's gonna happen when you pull the code down. So for us, if I want it to live in this GitHub template demo folder, you know, alongside of my base template, I need to navigate into that folder, CD. I'm gonna drag this in to get that, which takes us into this, we're in this folder right here now. And now all we have to do is run one command and we'll have our project set up on our computer. So we're gonna go back to our repo and this code button here in the upper right, if I click on it, it's gonna give me that path that we used when we connected to the remote repo earlier. So I'm gonna click this to copy it. I'm gonna come back to terminal. I wanna make sure this is open so you can see it happen in real time. And I'm gonna type git clone. I'm gonna paste that URL. There it goes. Here's our folder. And now I can just jump into my project. I can, I'm gonna close this one. I can just double click this new global game jam project. And here's everything. Here's our audio manager. Here's our globals with the changes we made. Here's our test script. And now the process is the same. If I wanna continue using Git moving forward throughout this project, if I wanna push stuff, it's just that same add, commit, push, just like we did with the base project. The last thing I wanna call out is you don't always have to use Git to use your template project. If you would like, you can also come in here and simply just download a zip of your template, which you can do, well, you wouldn't do it from here. Instead of creating a new repo, you would come into your Godot template and then you would just download a zip file. So if I did that and then open up this zip file, you'll see in there, here's my project without the Git stuff. It's just a standalone project. So there you have it. That's an incredibly easy way to get yourself up and running with boilerplate code in literally, like I said, just a couple of seconds. If you're good about keeping that up to date, every time you create a project, it's gonna be a million times easier. If you found this helpful, please click that thumb or subscribe to the channel to help me reach more creators like you. And for a sneak peek at my personal base project, take a look at the Scene Manager Plus tutorial, which I'm going to link up here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.